It is finally getting cold where I live. Or maybe cool. Cool would be a better descriptor. Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about 15 different fragrances that are great in cool weather. Some cool weather kings. Yeah, I don't think I've actually done a top 15 before. I'm just surrounded by fragrances. And I'm hoping that at some point I don't gesticulate wildly and knock half of these off. So let's just jump into it. We've got a nice mix here. Some of these a little bit cheaper, some a little more expensive, some designer, some niche. Let's kick things off with C.H. Preve from Carolina Herrera. Remember this one? This former beast of hype that looks like a whiskey flask. That's cool. Don't know why they didn't come out with another one of these, like C.H. Preve Intense. Everybody loves to do flankers. Why not a flanker of this? Now this has gotten a lot more expensive. At discounters now, it's, I think, over $100 for a bottle. Yeah, we've just entered full-on idiocy as far as the pricing of these goes. That's because they're harder to find now. Once upon a time, these were everywhere. Everyone was talking about CH Privé. Nowadays, CH Privé is like Uncle Rico reliving its prime back in the day. In case you're unaware of Uncle Rico, he's from uh, Napoleon Dynamite. It's a film that you should check out. And he uh, is past his prime, we could say. Now this has leather, tonka, whiskey, and cardamom. It smells fantastic. Even to this day, I think it smells great. And it's funny that I say even to this day because I think it came out like six years ago. Even to this day, a whole six years after the release, it still works, imagine that. Now this is an extremely easy to wear leather fragrance, good amount of sweetness, that booziness in here smells fantastic. The performance is so-so. I mean, it'll get the job done, assuming that you spray enough of it on. It's a big compliment puller, fantastic evening out fragrance. And I figured I'd highlight it at least one more time before the pricing gets too restrictive. And I just have to kind of, you know, put it into the back of the collection and forget what it once was. Next up, the one Royal Knight from Dolce & Gabbana. Cardamom, amber, sandalwood, cedar, and nutmeg, some of the notes in this scent. This does have that the one DNA that people love so much, you know, that, that compliment pulling sexy sweet DNA, but here you're getting a good dose of woodiness that kind of ups the masculinity, you could say. Now it's still primarily centered around cardamom and amber, but those additional woods in here really do help set this one apart in the line. And I'm gonna keep on moving, because I got 13 to go, and I don't want this video to be crazy, crazy, crazy long. Crazy long, that's fine, but crazy, crazy, crazy long? Hmm. Up next, let's go with Yves Saint Laurent, La Nuit de Lome, Le Parfum. Fruits, vanilla, lavender, labdanum, and pepper, some of the notes in the scent. And it does have a little bit of that La Nuit de Lome feel to it, which might be a little bit surprising considering cardamom is the main thing people remember from that original La Nuit and you don't really find that here. We've got a good amount of sweetness in here from that vanilla, from those fruity notes. And so I would say that it does come across a sweeter take on La Nuit de Lome while still maintaining what makes La Nuit de Lome so fantastic as an evening out or cool weather fragrance other than the cardamom. Now this one is quite sweet with the vanilla and the fruits in here. So you have that fruity sweetness in the opening and vanilla sweetness as it dries down. That is gonna be one of the big differentiators between this and the original La Nuit de Lome Eau de Toilette. One cool thing about that fragrance is that it's almost completely overlooked nowadays. It's not a La Nuit de Lome that really anybody's reaching for. So not as many people wearing it, it's gonna be a little bit more unique and it still has that mass appeal to it. I think it smells great. Now let's go with the big time B as far as the performance goes, Code Profumo from Armani. Let's whap somebody in the head with this. Looks like a little glass nightstick or something. Tonka, amber, cardamom, leather, and apple, some of the notes in this scent. Now, I myself typically reach for Code Absolute over Profumo, but if you're looking for just straight up performance, you know, projection, longevity, Profumo is gonna do that better than Absolute. And they are pretty similar. I mean, Absolute and Profumo are not worlds apart as far as how they smell. This one, again, really sweet, has this fantastic opening that has sort of an sweet carbonated cola smell to it. As it dries down, 
big bunches of tonka and amber come out. I think it smells great. It takes that cold DNA, revitalizes it, makes it more modern, and it is once again a mass appeal beast. Now, if we're talking mass appeal, we're talking niche fragrances, then you have to bring this one up. You just gotta do it. My wife loves this stuff. I love this stuff, I'm not gonna lie. It is Layton from Parfums to Marley. Apple, vanilla, cardamom, lavender woods. Man, this takes niche, uh, mass appeal, compliment factor, blibbity blue blah, and ramps it up to 11. Very warm, spicy, sweet. You can wear this in pretty much any situation. There's also Layton Exclusif, though personally, I prefer the original Layton, but if you are the type of person that likes their fragrances having a maybe a slight challenging side to it, you know, something that's gonna definitely set it apart a little bit more from the mainstream, then you might like Layton Exclusive a bit more. But for me, with what Layton is trying to do and what that DNA does, I'll just take the original. I mean, who are you trying to fool? At the end of the day, if you're wearing Layton, you're trying to smell friggin' good for everybody, okay? Let's just cut to the chase here. Nobody picked up a bottle of Layton and was like, <laughs> time for me to wear something challenging today, boys. So I don't know why you would get Layton exclusive and be like, mm, that little bit of funk. I love it. So for me, Layton exclusive, while it does smell good, it's gonna take a backseat to the OG. Up next, Dior Eau Sauvage Parfum. Now, this is the, I believe, 2012 edition of this fragrance. It was reformulated in, I think, 2017. And that version, which if you go onto discounters, is gonna be new packaging. It'll say Eau Sauvage Parfum, new packaging. Uh, that one is very, very similar to this one, but it's a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit fresher in the opening. Myrrh, vetiver, bergamot, and lavender. Some of the notes in this scent. This one does have a throwback feel to it. You know, it's got that old school, masculine, sophisticated edge. A little bit of a barbershop feel as well. And then a good amount of rich, warm, dense resins that, that really come in pretty early on as it kind of sags into the mid and stays there the rest of the way through. Exquisite quality here, smells fantastic for a designer release. It is going to appeal more to guys middle-aged and older and the performance killer. Let's go with the Cheapy Beast, Bentley for Men, Intense. Can't get it to stay right. Rum, Woods, Incense, Leather, some of the notes in this scent. Costs next to nothing at discounters. You can pick this up. Uh, on the cheap, on the super duper cheap. It has a similarity to Chambre Noir from Olfactive Studio and also Idole de Luban from Luban. Those are two niche fragrances which are much more expensive than this one. And I would say the quality for the cost here is amazing. Very masculine, woodsy with smoke, leather, and bits of booze throughout. Bentley from an Intense. There's a reason it is the flagship of the Bentley from In line. If you're gonna own only one, that's the one to own. Up next, Raja Parfum Creation E Parfum Cologne. Cognac, vanilla, tobacco, benzoin, and probably 75 other notes because it's a Raja Parfum. With Raja Parfum, they tell you all the notes, baby. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, Raja Parfum fragrances, look them up online. Man, they, they tell you all the notes, but I kind of dig that. Again, not dissimilar from Code Profumo in the sense that when you spray this on, you're gonna get this kind of uh, effervescent, sparkly, carbonated, sweet kind of opening where it just feels like the fragrance is bubbling, jumping off your skin. It's really zingy, smells amazing. It is a very rich fragrance. It's very sweet, but it's done elegantly. It's sophisticated as well. Big compliment puller, smells quite unique as well. Creation E, also known as Enigma, I think is an amazing release. The Parfum Cologne is the easiest way to get a hold of the fragrance. It's gonna be the most affordable one and also the one that's tailored the most toward just mass appeal, ease of use. Not that I really find any of the Enigma or Creation E releases or different uh, concentrations to be difficult to wear, but this is the one that would be, I guess, the easiest to pull off. Now, I'm gonna link all of these in the description. That one at Twisted Lily, you can use code GENTS10 to save yourself 10% off 
the price of the bottle. And that goes for the whole website. So any of the fragrances there, they've got a whole bunch of them. Gents 10, save yourself 10% off. And super quickly, Beast Mode Gents, these guys right here, the best. They support this channel hardcore. So you guys want to give a shout out to you. Thank you so much. If you want to join Beast Mode Gents, hit the join button below or check the link in the description that says, hey, join this membership thing, whatever. Next, let's go Issey Miyake and let's go Nui DC Noir Argent. Myrrh, leather, olibanum, patchouli, and saffron. Some of the notes in the scent. Said it before, say it again. Issey Miyake has some fantastic fall and winter fragrances. Their cool weather fragrances, more often than not, blow it out of the water. The quality is great. They smell amazing. And uh, for the price at discounters that you can typically pick them up for, they're a steal. This one, no different. You're gonna get some nice spiciness in here, resinous, warmth, leather. You're getting the whole nine yards. Noir Argent, this is one of the best in the entire Nui DC line. Now, some other ones that I absolutely love would be uh, Or Ensemble, Noir Ombre, and Pulse of the Night, all from Issey Miyake. Problem with those three, they're harder to find. I do wanna bring those up though, because if you find those somewhere for a decent price, any one of those three, I think you should buy it. Each one of those three, great, 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 great. They're just, like I said, hard to find. One of my very favorites ever, up next, love this stuff, Tom Ford, Tobacco Oud. Whiskey, spices, more woods, along with the tobacco and the oud, some of the notes in this scent. A little bit divisive, some people don't like it, some people think that the opening is a little bit funky. I think it's good. I was told this story before, but my wife hated it. She was giving it the big thumbs down. She said it was one of the worst things she ever smelled. And then over time, she came around to really like it. I loved it right away though. I think this stuff is just freaking awesome. Ah, it's so good. Ah, man. It's got like this kind of syrupy sweetness with this, this little this little touch of that that funk you'd I mean, it's not like hardcore animalic or or fecal or anything like that but yeah it can be an acquired taste for some people oh man it's good though pipe tobacco spices that whiskey booze like just syrupy dripping sweet all over everything while at the same time having that that bit of an edge from the oud here uh it's great let's keep it moving mustache eau de parfum from Rojas. This one is really well known for being a cheaper alternative to Yves Saint Laurent's tuxedo. So if you can't afford that one or you can't find that one or whatever, you don't feel comfortable spending that much money, you can pick this up and it's gonna get you a very similar feeling only for a lot less. Benzoin, vanilla, pink pepper, and citrus, some of the notes in this scent, Really high quality stuff. Again, for a good price. Bottle feels great, looks great. The fragrance smells fantastic, warm, rich. Good amount of depth here, very smooth, no rough edges, nothing sticks out like a sore thumb. Really well done. It does get a lot of hype and has gotten a lot of hype, but there's a reason for that. It's because again, your bang for the buck here is enormous. One of the issues though that comes with hype is uh, they can be difficult to locate these fragrances because they pop up on discounters and they're gone and then they come back and they're gone and they come back and they're gone now lately this one is kind of stabilized you can usually find it nowadays but in case for some reason you're looking for it and you can't seem to find it, it seems to be sold out everywhere just hold on and it'll be back again don't overpay for it I think that you should be able to get that around the $50 range. You don't want to start paying 80 or 90 or something like that because at that point you're overpaying. All right, boys. Next up, DS and Durga. Hmm. Amber Kiso. Look at the color of this fragrance. That is rich. Looks like syrup almost. Leather, hinoki, maple, cypress, and incense. Some of the notes in this scent and it is very leathery and woodsy now i know the name is amber kiso so you would think oh it's gonna be you know really sweet and ambery resinous you know warm and soft and all these things uh, not so much it's a very 
powerful woodsy fragrance with a strong leather over top of it, but the leather is not so aggressive or abrasive that it starts to come across as off-putting. Now, that being said, as I mentioned, it is pretty strong. So if you spray a lot of this on, then people around are going to know and you may not enjoy it yourself with it being a little too overwhelming. Amber Kiso, though, one of my absolute favorites from the house of Diaz and Durgo, which is a house that I like a whole bunch. Now we're going to an Oud fragrance once more, Oud Malaki from Chopard. Now I say oud, but this also is heavily inundated with tobacco spices and once again, leather. So you've got just a whole bunch of strong, cool weather notes all packed right inside here. Tobacco, check. Leather, check. Oud, check. Spices, check. So it's a really nice tobacco fragrance. It's more of a Middle Eastern style. It's not as much of this uh, sweet pipe tobacco here. It's as I mentioned, very, very spiced, sprinkled throughout from the top to the mid to the base. These Chopard bottles, I've mentioned this before, but I'm kind of, I'm split on them because they look pretty nice. The cap is good feeling. It clicks solidly into place. Bottle design looks good. And then with these fragrances, they just slap kind of a cheap looking sticker right on the front, just like pfft. Fragrance is fantastic though. Oud Malaki worth checking out. And frankly, that entire line of fragrances, the Malaki line has some sleepers in there because not many people are buying those or wearing those. You know, it's not like an Armani or a Versace or a Chanel or a Dior or Yves Saint Laurent or something like that where everybody knows about it. So uh, if you're looking for some fragrances that have a great quality to them and fly under the radar where most people are not wearing them, don't know about them, check that line out. Let's get some iris going up in here. Valentino Womo Intense also has Tonka vanilla and leather. Great fragrance, great, 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 great fragrance. Now this one, people were afraid for a long time that it was getting discontinued. There was a lot of talk about that. People saying, oh, it's going away. You know, that was everywhere. I heard it, I talked about it, everybody talked about it. Valentino basically changed the packaging up though, and Valentino Womo Intense lives on. And I have gotten messages from people who own both the original packaging of a Valentino Womo Intense and the new one. And they've told me, now I haven't smelled the new packaging yet, but they've told me uh, that it's it's the same. So that's a big win for everybody because Valentino Womo Intense is fantastic. The iris here is going to remind some people of the iris and fragrances like Dior Homme Intense. That's not a bad thing because Dior Homme Intense, one of my favorites of all time. And then you've also got a good little bit of leather kind of giving it this very slight masculine contrast to that iris, along with a good amount of sweetness and warmth from the vanilla and the tonka. Valentino Womo Intense gonna be more of a formal fragrance, you know, more of an evening out fragrance, but frankly, I love the way it smells so much. I would wear it anytime, don't care. Absolutely stunning, so glad it is not dead. Last scent, this one is from Fragrance One, Black Tie. And in case anybody is curious, I bought this. I did not get this for free. It's got Gayak wood, mandarin orange, lemon, vetiver, patchouli, and uh, it has kind of a leather accord to it, really, from the Gayak wood. It, it comes across actually mainly like a, a leathery scent. Well, sort of this zingy fruit sweetness and then a good amount of leather, and it dries down to a similar dry down, actually, to some of the other scents in the Fragrance One brand. Overall, though, I would say Black Tie is my favorite Fragrance One fragrance, and it's not close. This stuff slaps. Performance is really, really good. It reminds me vaguely of fragrances like Gucci Guilty Absolute and No Limits by Philip Pline. Now, I know some people are gonna automatically hate on it because of the association with Jeremy Fragrance. Of course, Jeremy Fragrance, uh, Fragrance One is his brand but Black Tie is a great scent, love this stuff. So with that, Black Tie, gonna wrap this list up of 15 cool weather kings. Any of these, any of these right here, if you're wearing this in the fall or winter time, once it starts to get cool outside, you're gonna be smelling like a boss. I love these scents. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. A bit of a long video today. Let me know in the comments below some of the fragrances that you think personally are, are your cool weather kings. Fragrances that when you spray them on, it's cold outside, you just think, man, I smell nice. 
As always, thanks for hanging with me, especially those of you watching right now that made it to the end. You guys are the 5%. And I appreciate you guys so much. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.